the origins of my reverse RMD retirement plan. All right, so this is the book I'm working on. Man, I've had, I think I've had this in my head for, oh man, five years now, uh, if not longer. But I just started putting pen to paper today with my with typing skills. Actually, I do type well. Uh, I've learned that. The one of the things I did learn in high school is how to type. They call me the keyboard warrior. Typing. Even though I just barely graduated high school by the, the chin of my chinny chin chin, something like that, uh, typing was one skill I did learn in high school. Nothing else, but that one was one skill. Anyway, so what we're going to, the reason I, I, I thought about this reverse RMD is because the, the typical method, you know, basically where the 4% rule is derived, is you take your expenses, you take, you say, I need $100,000 a year of expenses. I'm just using that. The vast majority of my clients don't spend anywhere near $100,000 a year. Regardless of the size of their portfolio, they just don't. I'm just telling you right now, a lot of people I work, and if you do, that's fine. I'm just saying a lot of people I work with, like they just don't have significant expenditures. They don't. That's why they got no debt. That's why they paid off their mortgage, paid off their cars. They're in the same house. They got the same wives. They got the same old vehicles. It's the same old story. I'm not saying if that's not you, you're a bad person. I'm just saying for the people I work with, generally speaking, 100000 bucks is on the high end. Now, that I do have some people spend more than that, mind you, but... I bet if you actually look at your own records, you'll say, I don't think I'm going to spend that kind of money. But anyway, so the, the, the 4% rule and other financial plans, they assume that your spending is going to go up each and every year adjusted with inflation. 103, 106, 110, 114, a compounding inflation. You know what I'm saying? And there's just no evidence for that whatsoever. And once you see that there's no evidence for that, we're like, why are we running retirement models based on something there's no evidence for? I mean, it might be a little bit of evidence, but it's not overwhelming by any stretch of the imagination. The evidence is quite lacking, frankly. So, the, my, so my thought process is if we know how required distributions work, RMDs, required minimum distributions, you start with a 3.6, you go to 3.8, you go to 4.1, you go to 4.4, you know, 4.8, something like that, you know, 5, whatever it is, 5.3. So you're starting with a lower amount and it's getting larger as you get older, all right? So you're starting with a lower percentage, that's percentage of your assets you got to take for RMD. And I said, well, th that doesn't make sense because right here, our expenditures are going up each and every year with inflation and the RMDs you know, are basically going up each and every year as well, assuming it doesn't matter what your portfolio does, it just matters the percentage of your portfolio. But I said, this isn't reality. The reality is exactly something completely different than this. The reality is, if we go draw this line again, you're actually starting your spending up here. And while your spending might go up a little bit on the front end, it's gonna, it goes down after, you know, let's say 10 years or so. If even that, I doubt even it goes up for the first 10 years, but let's just run with that. So it might go up to, oh, you know, 120 or something like that. But then it starts going down and starts going down rapidly. So why would we want to take a little bit out of your portfolio on the front end while your spending is at the highest it's ever going to be in retirement? We should want to take out a lot in the front end to cover the years where we got enough, enough ability and desire to go have fun and party like it's 1999. You see what I'm saying? So we should say no. We should start with a 9% and then drop it each and every year, 8.6. So it should be going like this. It should be going from lower from higher to lower we start a lower amount a higher amount on the front end i probably got those numbers wrong I probably should have done the other way around um in terms of these errors i mean but we should want to start nine percent while we're here in the, in the party time not the low amount and that doesn't exclude you from starting with a higher amount but i'm just saying what if we had a methodology that says we're going to take nine percent drop it by 20 basis points each year 8.4 then as we get older we're taking a, you know, a lower amount out. You see what I'm saying? Because as we get older and we just don't get as active, we don't need as much money from our portfolio. So that's the origins of my required, uh, my reverse RMD that I'm working on now. And I'll get this book done by you know, in the next couple of months. Uh, and again, the, the, the issue is, can we make this work during the worst market ever, which was 66 through 82, because you had low returns and we had high inflation. If we can get that, look, and there's no guarantee that it, because it happened in the past, it'll happen again. But I just want to see, and I've already done some preliminary research on this stuff, but I just want to see, can we make that work? And if so, we want you to have fun here. Because when this time comes and you're getting older, you're just not going to be that inclined to do stuff, man. I've seen it with my own eyes. All right. Love your thoughts. God bless. Don't forget, well, tomorrow's live stream, we'll have Andrew Biggs. 
uh, formerly the second in command at the Social Security Administration, who now writes for Social Security about Social Security with American Enterprise Institute, Forbes, Wall Street Journal, all kinds of stuff. There'll be a Q&A, so join us live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. God bless.